I'm here by a beautiful babbling brook and I'm in the trees and it's very magic and as if something has kind of like zapped down from space I've got this incredible HB 916 in a custom painted edition from Enduro and well, just riding legend Joe Barnes like it, I mean there's so much on here who else better to inform me of what this incredible bike secrets are than Joe himself and here marching out of the woods next to this wonderful babbling brook Joe this bike is amazing talk us through some of your like your special tech on it oh thank you um right well my special tech good question well the guys at hope uh spoil me rotten and basically they they are a machinist machine shop so they put a few custom parts on for me um so we'll start off i don't know the the linkage for the rear shock for example so i do run mullet wheels different size wheels like you said yep. um but uh, to make the rear to make it as balanced as possible for me i did a load of testing i ended up wanting the bottom bracket a little bit higher and also 10 more mil travel on the back oh so that linkage does both those things so it's now 170 170 okay yep uh, with a higher bb and also a 10 mil longer back end uh to in my mind balance out the feel of the smaller wheel and the bigger wheel yeah so i can ride as aggressive as i want and not buzz my bum but it it feels balanced front and back yep so that was one goal with this bike uh they've also done custom lever blades here they came out of the oh. workshop so i like my brakes pretty close in uh, and so they've changed the the kink on the lever blade to make them hit the sweet spot where when they bite they're still parallel with the bar so we've got one up bars one up dropper uh i guess there's lots of chat in terms of well length of dropper length of cranks so i guess but we'll start with bars what bar width are you running and are those the carbon ones and are they the ones that have got this this clever ovalized shape talk us through the the bar and and seat post that'd be great okay uh yeah so the the handlebar to start with that is that is the one up carbon bar with the uh it's, it's not a round tube it's been flattened on the on the curve so it's got more up and down sensitivity and all, but then quite rigid in the plane that you steer uh, yeah. so that's a really comfy bar uh, and they're cut to 730 but 740 with grips uh, so on the narrow side but there's a lot of tight tree gaps here i'm, okay, I'm a small dude so yeah, that yeah. works for yeah. me and uh yeah gusset grips as well um with Nice silver collars to match my brakes, so That's chuffed nasty. with that. What stem have you got there? <laughs> yeah, so that is a one-up stem um, in a 50 length. So I like it to slow my steering down a bit. Longer stem just makes the steering feel less twitchy for me. And then inside the steerer tube, we have the magic one-up tool. Ooh. So that's got everything you want. Tire lever, chain splitter, multi-tool. And that just pops in there, so that's uh, yeah, threaded steerer top cap. Next question. Okay, that's really good. And also, good to know about the narrow bars because I've, yeah, I've gone up to 740 yeah. and I've gone, actually, I think that's about right. But there's a lot yeah. of peer pressure in the office that I should, I should, uh, yeah, get hero bars and 760 is the minimum, which seems I'm not, I'm not a massive yeah. unit. So good to have confirmation that I don't have to worry. And then a 150 dropper. Here we go. So not too much on the dropper. Yep. Um, that's just, yeah, it works for me. And I did use a 180 previous years, but with newer bikes again the bikes went longer and i used a bigger dropper and now bikes are still long but the seat tube angles are so steep the seat's kind of out my way by being forward now yeah so one i'm back to a 150 okay yeah so it's still out my way but i keep the height so it's a good contact patch uh and then yeah on top of that gusset um saddle in the, the extra small version which oh, is the really sm cool. version so it's really short and really narrow just feels amazing it's actually a downhill saddle but like comfy nice. enough for me to ride on yeah so really interesting insight about the the saddle there in terms of or oh, not so much the saddle that is interesting but more the dropper how you've gone to less of a drop and is that so when you're riding that you can have the saddle sort of like you can grip it and it's in the right place versus just completely disappearing it's interesting to get your insights on that yeah uh, yeah, pretty much. So it is a contact patch, yep. as they say. So, so yeah, if it's fully slammed for me, I feel like um, I'm just like there's there's nothing to feel and get tired legs because you can't half sit down half the time. Um, but then at the same time, if you can't get really behind it, it's 
pretty unpleasant when it gets sketchy. So having now the, the seats posted so far forward, these steep seat tubes, yep. I thought now's a good chance to get the seat back up a little bit. Okay, yep. Um, and it's lighter <laughs> and it's good. Uh, well, it just was a pros, pros, pros for me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm happy with 150. Awesome. Yeah. And then I guess like moving down, okay, we've got some chat probably about these links yeah. here, but also about the cranks because just my eyeballs look well, my eyeballs are getting used to measurements, so it's good to see smaller smaller bars and things like this, but they look shorter. So what, what length are you running? Um, yeah, so these cranks, the new Hope Carbon Cranks, uh, these are 165, okay. which I suppose used to be the shortest thing you got. Yeah. Um, but now there's 155s, okay. which I did run all last winter, and I do still keep on my HB 130, the sort of more trail bike. I'll just, yeah, the, the sort of differences for me between the 155s and 165s was the 155s, you can pedal on technical uphills night and day better. Okay, you yeah. just can keep spinning, keep your speed going, and it's really nice. So probably if I didn't race, I would just run 155s. But when I race, it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a good technique or not, but I end up putting in a lot of half cranks, a lot of quarter cranks even, just like out of a turn, get a bit of a lean on the front foot. And so I just went back to 165s because I felt like that lean was just a bit more effective with with them cranks so so yeah 165s and they're quite a deep crank these so it looks it kind of looks shorter it's yeah, an optical yeah. illusion okay yeah um but yeah they're great i mean you pick them up they weigh nothing okay so light so yeah that's that's my crank and then yeah hope pedals on top hope union tcs okay nice um and they've got i've got the the extra float pedals so they, they okay, did yeah. have two sizes and they've launched another degree of float just so you can get as loose as you want on the bike without actually unclipping. Okay, no. And without making you feel too tired, yeah. uh, what size tires you're running and kind of like sealant and stuff like that? Are you running any inserts? It's just always good to get those yeah. insights, especially from someone like you who really thinks about the details. Isn't someone that just hops on a bike and rides. Yeah. You're like, you're thinking and that's always really good to yeah, yeah. chat with. So yeah, not to tire you out, but tire yeah. chat. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, uh, mullet, diff different size wheels uh, and uh, Magic Mary on the front from Schwalbe, which I've run for a lot of years now and it's like second nature to me, that tyre. And I run ultra soft front and back. Um, uh, yeah, I like the grip, so yeah. I don't mind pedalling it. it. It's hardly noticeable over the softs, but um, that's what I go for. Uh, no inserts, uh, I just, the extra weight, I don't feel like I need. Um, and yeah, 18 PSI front, 23 rear. Okay, yeah. So quite a big difference in pressures. Yeah. But I basically run them as soft as I can until they start squirming. Okay, yeah. And that's just what it lands on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, so so that's my tire setup. Yeah, no insert, 26 mil rims, so quite narrow rims. Yeah. But I just like my tires to have a really nice curve to them, which, yeah. Um, yeah, just they, I think they look better as well when they're like that. Don't like a flat top to the tire, I like it curved. So, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's some science in terms of as the bike leans over, like it's yeah. it's easier to lean the bike over when you're leaning on a curve versus like that yeah. square edge, and then oh, I've, I've slipped. But interesting in terms of that, you'd just rather have air than, than inserts. It's something actually chatting to sort of downhill racers. There's a that it seems that lots of them are starting to run inserts, not so much as, as they first came out as the really huge ones, yeah. but trying to get away with the very minimal one that they can do just for, I guess, a bit of insurance for a, yeah. for a downhill racer. But uh, yeah, have you ever tried them? And, and I guess, are you just happy with like burlier tires and then that's enough? Yeah, like probably from the downhill's perspective as well, I don't need them for safety reasons. Like I'm not going to puncture this setup. Um, and so the only advantage to them, which is a huge advantage, is basically running lower tyre pressure. Okay, yeah. um, so when I did, I do test them, I've tested loads of different ones. Yeah, yeah. And so the um, XC ones, yeah, yeah. I, I did actually quite like, and I found running them, I could run about two PSI less in my pressures. Okay, yeah. Um, and maintain the same anti-squirm. Yep. Um, but you lose a bit of pop. So it's it's more feel than anything. So it's softer, you get more grip, but you lose the pop. Okay, and yeah. and I just chose to run a, a simpler setup and, and have a lighter feeling bike. Like yeah. It's not, it's lighter, but it also feels lighter. Yep. Yeah.
yeah, no, that all, all makes sense. Um, I guess, is there anything special in terms of the, I can see a bit of a flip chip there. I'm a lover, lover yeah, fan yeah. of a, a flip chip. So is there anything else in terms of that you play with in terms of the progression and is it effectively a, a stock tune on, on the shock and the fork? Yeah, so uh, flip chips, that's um, to make, change the for the wheel size. Okay. So the geometry is actually identical with a 29er wheel and the flip chip moved. Um, which is quite handy, so you can just change that easily. Um, and yeah, so the, the it changes the leverage a little bit, my different linkage. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, so for shock tunes, uh, on the rear I run it's, well, it, <laughs> nothing stock, because no, no. there's like, <laughs> but I hope choose a tune for the, of the shocks for okay. these bikes. So the compression tune's set already. Okay, yeah. Um, C4, don't know what that means, but Owens have okay, got a grading yeah, yeah, scale. Okay, yeah. um, it's quite a light tune because the bike is really progressive. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, and then on the rebound, just a personal thing for me is I like a bit more high speed rebound than most shocks come with. Okay. Um, so I can run the low speed, which is the, like on the dial, quite open yeah. and let it be flapping about, but then on big hits it, it actually stays good. down. Okay, yeah. So I've got a custom high, uh, slower high speed rebound. Yeah. And then the forks, like they, you can come. I think there's five different stock tunes on the fork, yeah. um, and it comes with the middle one. But I come, I get mine with one lighter. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, maybe a smaller guy, but uh, I like to run it more on the air and less on the damping on the fork. I could go on and on, but I feel like this will be uh, 50 Long minutes. Uh, actually, <laughs> one last important question: Where does the inspiration for the paint job come from? <laughs> Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, that's another hope, hopeism. They have an in-house painter, Bailey. And so every year for myself and the team, they say, what do you want for a paint job? Yeah. <laughs> and so the first year was kind of rastery vibes. Uh, oh, it had blue and stuff as well, but it was m mad colors everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year was like a grave digger truck. Nice. And this year, I d honestly don't know where the inspiration came from, but I've got paint run on this frame and there's a paint run on my jerseys. And so I just, nice. I thought, Mix it up from flames and go paint run. The colors stand out, I think, stand out pretty well. Uh, and it turns a few heads, so I'm happy with that. I mean, personally, I think it's awesome. I feel like there's sort of like donut vibes yeah. there to a degree. So, but yeah, thank you so much for your time and thanks for all the in-depth chat. Uh, let us know if this is the chat that you like and you want more, uh, like and subscribe, and then we can get more to you of this sort of stuff.